Hi, this is Eric Hansen with Communications Conversations. Today I'm here at Blog World with uh, Natasha Westcote. Natasha, we just got done with our panel, um, uh, Small Business, Big Impact. Um, thought it went quite well. Um, just a few questions for you. A, I'm, com after doing research on you for this panel, I'm completely fascinated by the fact how you use video and, and live casting for your, you're an artist and you, and you sell art on, just strictly online. Um, talk a little bit about how you use video and live casting to uh, engage with your customers. Okay, well, in 2005, actually, I started video blogging. This was long before uh, streaming was becoming more um, known. Mm -hmm. um, so I was using that as a form to show people my process. They love watching me paint, so I would do painting videos. Um, and over time, I decided to experiment with the idea of going live because then they could, you know, chat, talk to each other, maybe give me some input, and I thought that'd be really cool, because I'm very open to critiques and mm -hmm. um, um, seeing what they want. I mean, I need to know what they want, so it's also kind of a way to crowdsource information. Right. But, uh, so I, I started painting live um, in my studio, set up the camera with my, my eyesight and my MacBook, and started painting, and people became really interested in what I had available around the studio, so I'd talk to them, show them my paintings, yeah. um, and ask questions, they ask everything, you know, where did you start, how did you do what you did, um, what kind of ma materials you used, a lot of them were artists too, mm -hmm. so they wanted some tips and tricks, and I'd, I'd give them some information on how to paint certain things, or do whatever. Um, and then they became interested in actually purchasing some pieces, so we would auction them off, and it became really big. <laughs> so I started doing more of that. And so um, it was probably a year later, me and my friend Brent Spore of iBoughtAMac.com came up with this idea to do these events around the U.S. where you could watch local artists paint live. Mm -hmm. People love that. So, I mean, it, it just makes sense because so cool. on, on the Internet... Um, not only is it harder for people to shop, it's a lot easier than it used to be. But right. people are still a little it's wary, better, especially yeah. of, yeah, and especially of buying art. They right. can't see it close up. They don't know exactly how it looks. They can't touch. Well, not there. You go, touch the art, but um, it's not tangible to them. So, video even better than just tons of photos of the piece. People love the video. That's interesting. Well, and I think the lesson for me that when I heard you talk in the panel was that. I mean, you never had a grand plan when you started that video. You just tried something and look at how it's exactly. evolved and you've just grown it and now you're selling, you know, you're selling your art as a result of that. Yes. Um, that's kind of a difficult thing really for artists is they're afraid to put their art out there. They're afraid of the exposure or maybe they, they're afraid of rejection or right. um, exposing themselves too much. And so it, it's really a lot about um, perseverance and, and, and bravery <laughs> right. to try it because you really need to experiment if you want to find out what will work for you. Right. Okay, so, so that leads me into my next question that we talked about up here too is um, – how have you? Uh, how have it, has how has it evolved for you as far as your interactions online? You mentioned in there that you were you were kind of conservative starting out, but that changed over the years for you. Talk a little bit about that. Um, yes, when I had started out, I didn't understand fully of of the possibilities in selling my work, what I could accomplish just being myself. Um, um, I thought you need to be a little more conservative, um, be cre to, uh, project this persona. You're a fine artist, so you have to be very sophisticated and smart and quiet and, and non-controversial or whatever. That does not seem like you, by the way. No. <laughs> I am goofy and quirky and silly, and I, I guess I kinda, you kind of see that in my art is bright and fun. And, mm -hmm. um, so I had started out that way. I wasn't getting a lot of the feedback I wanted. I wasn't connecting with people like mm -hmm. I wish I could have, and so I had decided this, this just doesn't seem right. I need to be more of myself and I've gotten quite a positive response from that I realized that people really enjoy seeing you as yourself on a day-to-day -day basis they mm -hmm. love it when I mean I go from providing like a valuable link of content on Twitter like some kind of article that might benefit them to like saying the stupidest thing in the world <laughs> I just be myself at the moment, something's happening, I let them know what's going on in my life, and they love that, they feel like they're a part of it in some way, I'm not giving a lot of information about myself either, um, just allowing them to connect to me, and I've had a lot of positive response from that, and a lot of return on the investment, as far as monetary, and opportunities, and stuff like that, just 
being myself and representing myself as the brand. Great. Great. Thank you, Natasha. If you want to learn more about Natasha's art, you can visit her at natashawestcoat.com and you can uh, uh, see her live oftentimes on her website. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you.